قد وقعنا مرغمين كما يقال في مأزق أبغض Good afternoon and thank you for joining us on Future TV. I'm Linda Tamim and these are today's top stories. Fighting between rival communities in Tripoli seem to have subsided as the army continues its deployment in the trouble spots. Future bloc leader Fuad Sinyura calls on Hezbollah to withdraw its militia from Syria. And the United Nations launches a record $5.2 billion aid appeal to fund operations in Syria. Fighting between rival communities in the northern city of Tripoli seemed to have subsided after the army continued its deployments in the trouble spots. The national news agency said cautious calm prevailed after the military took control of bases from Al Nashar family in the area of Al Rifai, central Tripoli, a day after heavy gun battles with members from the Hajar family. The clashes came after a security plan by the army managed to relatively contain the violence in the flashpoint districts of Bab Tabani and Jabal Mohsin. Troops set up checkpoints in all neighborhoods and deployed heavily in Sierra Street that separates the warring districts. Sources say soldiers opened fire on snipers in Babat Tabani overnight and carried out raids in most Tripoli neighborhoods to chase the gunmen. The highway linking Tripoli with Akkad was also reopened. Future Balak leader Fuad Sanyura has called on Hezbollah to withdraw its militia from Syria and urged the deployment of the Lebanese army along Lebanon's border. Senyura said Hezbollah should pull out its militia from Syria and return the young men of the Bekaa and the south to their homes, villages, businesses and families. The former premier rejected turning Hezbollah fighters into the fuel of what he called the Islamic strife. Hezbollah has played a key role in helping Syrian President Bashar al-Assad's forces to seize the town of Qusair, around 10 kilometers from Lebanon's border. Senyura called for the deployment of the army on the borders with Syria to prevent the smuggling of arms and infiltration of gunmen from both sides of the boundary. He added the assistance of the UN interim force in Lebanon should be sought in that regard. The Army Command has pointed to a series of strict security measures carried out in all Lebanese regions. It urges the Lebanese to be vigilant against any schemes that aim to drag the country into another civil war or embroil it in the Syrian conflict. The Army's leadership said in a communique that it strongly sought to deter the transformation of Lebanon into an arena for regional conflicts and prevent the spillover of the Syrian crisis to its territories. The Army is determined to implement its plan not only in Tripoli, but also in any spot intended to be a focus for fighting between citizens of the same city. The source says armed action will be fought with armed response. The statement concluded by calling on the Lebanese to cooperate with the Army to reach the peaceful goals for the interest of the nation and the Lebanese. Lebanese Army Chief General Jean Ahwaji has met with the UN Special Coordinator for Lebanon, Derek Plamy, at his office in Yerzi. The pair reportedly discussed the means to bolster cooperation between the military institution and the United Nations Interim Force in Lebanon. Talks also touched on the current general situation. Prime Minister-designate Tamam Slam held discussions about the process of forming a new government with MP Ahmad Hodi and former Minister Fadis Bouez. Speaking after the meeting, Hodi reiterated the support for the future movement, stressing the need for rapid formation of a government of national interest who would consider the needs of the citizens. For his part, Bouez praised the Prime Minister-designate for the efforts he exerted to fulfill his tasks, especially given the difficult circumstances which jeopardize his work. Syrian regime forces have sought to mop up the final pockets of rebel resistance north of Qusair after retaking the key town that was an insurgent bastion for a year. The Syrian Observatory for Human Rights says the regime forces were also sending reinforcements to the northern province of Aleppo, where large swathes of territory have been in rebel hands for months. It added that clashes broke out at dawn between the army and rebels on the outskirts of Daba village north of Qusair. Hezbollah TV channel in Manar quoted a general saying his troops had launched a surprise attack aimed at the liberation of Daba from rebels. A second rebel bastion north of Qusair, eastern Bueda, where hundreds of wounded and civilians fled after the fall of Qusair, was still being bombarded by the regime. At least 15 rebels were killed in bombardments in Daba and eastern Bueda. The UN has launched a record $5.2 billion aid appeal to fund operations in Syria and neighboring nations saying the number of people affected by the country's brutal conflict was set to spiral. 
The sum by far overshadows the $2.2 billion to, uh, the UN sought in 2003 to help cope with the crisis sparked by the war in Iraq. The world body said that a total of $3.8 billion was needed to help Syrian refugees who have spilled across the country's border to escape fighting in their homeland. The figure for operations inside Syria, meanwhile, was 1.4 billion U.S. dollars. <coughs> Senator John McCain has called for a ramping, ram, ramping up of U.S. support for opposition groups in Syria, saying the U.S. should use standoff weapons to help establish a safe zone for a provisional government to operate within Syrian territory. McCain made the remarks during a speech in Washington, D.C. No one should think that we have to destroy every defense system or put thousands of boots on the ground to make a difference in Syria. We have limited options. We could use our standoff weapons, such as cruise missiles, to target Assad's aircraft and ballistic missile launchers on the ground. We could enable a provisional government to establish itself in a safe zone in Syria that we could help to protect with Patriot missiles. And we could organize a full-scale operation to train and equip Syrian oppor opposition forces. The result of this onslaught is that Syria, as we know it, is ceasing to exist. More than 80,000 people are dead. A quarter of all Syrians have been driven from their homes. The Syrian state is disintegrating in much of the country, leaving vast ungoverned spaces that are being filled by extremists, many of them aligned with al-Qaeda. The entire Middle East is now up for grabs, and our enemies are fully committed to winning. Moderate forces and aspiring Democrats are fighting for their futures and their very lives. The only power that is not fully committed in this struggle is us. Coming up next, the U.S. admits it is monitoring Internet firm servers. We'll give you all the details after the break. Welcome back. The Syrian army appears to still be in control of the crossing near the border with Israel after a day of clashes and tension. Sporadic gunfire can be heard from across the Israeli-occupied Golan Heights. Syrian forces loyal to President Bashar al-Assad fought off an attempt by rebels to seize the sole crossing between Syria and Israel on Thursday, wounding two UN peacekeepers. Austria says it will withdraw its peacekeepers from UN disengagement observer forces, given worsening fighting between Syrian government forces and rebels. Austrians account for about 380 of the thousand-strong UN force monitoring a ceasefire between Syria and Israel. Israel said it regrets Austria's decision to withdraw its peacekeepers from the Golan Heights and hopes the move will not lead to further escalation of conflict along the Syrian frontier. We consider UNDOF to be an extremely important mission and we support it and we want it to continue. Uh, we've noted the decision of the Austrian government to pull out their forces. Um, that is significant because they provide more than a third of the total number of uh, 913, I think it is, uh, UNDOF forces. Um, we're in close consultations with uh, DPKO. Um, they are speaking to the troop contributors and I understand they're having a meeting with the troop contributors uh, in the course of today. And we are discussing with other council members the possibility of a uh, consultations and a briefing from DPKO on the UNDOF situation at some point tomorrow. Police in plain clothes ask protesters occupying Ankara's Kugulu Park in support of Istanbul's demonstrators to leave their camp. Protesters occupying Gezi Park say they are still hopeful that a diplomatic solution can be reached with Turkish Prime Minister Tayyip Erdogan. This comes after Erdogan told thousands of cheering supporters not to be drawn into violence during a speech at the airport following his return from a trip to North Africa. At the park, protesters said they will not stop the occupation and hope the Prime Minister will find a peaceful resolution. Turkey has been rocked by its worst political unrest for decades over the past week. What began as a campaign against planned construction on a leafy park in a corner of Istanbul's Taksim Square has grown into an unprecedented display of public anger over the perceived authoritarianism of Erdogan and his Islamist-rooted AK party. The thing uh, that should happen is the people should you know, take the charge back and it should all be done in a diplomatic way rather than in a violent manner, but I'm, I'm not sure. We heard of some rumors that um, the police and the people were going to march here um, against the crowd over here, but I'm not sure whether that happened or not. 
because we didn't see anything uh, last night, but uh, we're going to keep on coming here and we'll see. But yeah, he just came back yesterday. He made two announcements, one at airport, one at his home. They were both aggressive, still aggressive. I personally was hoping that he would back down a little bit, just a little bit at least, to ease the tension in here, but he didn't. I'm still hoping that as a citizen, as a democratic citizen, I'm still hoping that he's going to back down. Egypt's President Mohamed Morsi has rejected opposition calls for an early election less than a year ago into his term of office, calling them absurd. Morsi said such calls violated the Constitution. Morsi was commenting on an opposition-backed campaign dubbed Tamarud, Arabic for Rebellion, which says it has gathered 7 million signatures to a petition demanding that Morsi step down to pave the way for an early election. The campaign's mainly secular supporters and the April 6 movement, which was one of the spearheads of the 2011 uprising that ousted veteran strongman Hosni Mbarak, are calling for a mass protest on June the 30th, the first anniversary of Morsi's taking office. Morsi's opponents accuse him of governing in the interest of the Muslim Brotherhood, party of whose ticket he ran in the presidential election, and of re reneging on his promise to rule the interest of all Egyptians. North Korea has reopened a Red Cross hotline with South Korea and invited officials from Seoul to talks over the weekend. Sources say this may be a further sign the North wants to improve ties after a barrage of threats to a wage war last year. This year, North Korea had proposed talks to no normalize commercial projects, including a joint industrial zone. It shut down at the height of tension in early April. South Korea has proposed cabinet-level talks on June the 12th in Seoul to discuss a range of issues including commercial projects and families separated during the 1950-1953 Korean War. In response, the North invited South Korea to a working level meeting on Sunday in the border city of Kaesong, where South Korean companies employed 53,000 North Korean workers to make cheap household goods until the North ordered it closed. And now for news around the world in brief, a time bomb has exploded under the car of a Greek high security prison director outside her home smashing windows of nearby houses and slightly injuring one woman. The device, which police estimate contain at least one kilogram of dynamite, was left under the car driven by Maria Stefi outside her house in Athens. Police cordoned off the area after an unidentified caller warned a Greek news website that a bomb would blow up in 20 minutes. An international research team organized by China's Institute of Vertebrate Paleontology and Paleoanthropology has discovered and, and reconstructed a primate fossil which could date back to 55 billion years. The stone-sized fossil was dug up in central China's Hubei province and contains large amount of historical information that will provide scientists with a better understanding of the complex evolution which leads primates to become humans. Researchers say the fossil was reconstructed by using synchrotron radiation, one of the world's most advanced technologies. French President François Hollande has come under fire for confusing Japan and China in a speech given at the Japanese Prime Minister's office in Tokyo. Speaking at press conference after bilateral meetings with J Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe, Hollande mentioned the Japanese hostages held by Islamist militants in Algeria. He mistakenly said France presented its condolences to the Chinese people. The mistake was not translated into Japanese and was only noted in the French media. The Obama administration has acknowledged it is collecting a massive amount of telephone records from at least one carrier, reopening the debate over privacy even as it defended the practice as necessary to protect American citizens. The, admi the admission comes after the Guardian newspaper published a secret court order released to the records of millions of Verizon communication customers on its website. A senior administration official noted the published court order pertains only to data such as telephone number on the length of a call and not the subscriber's identity or the content of the te telephone calls. The order requires the government to turn over so-called metadata, such as a list of numbers that called other U.S. or international numbers, as well as other transactional information on the time and location of calls. Officials such information a critical tool in protecting the nation from terrorist threats to the United States. This marks the end of our bulletin for today. Now for a reminder of our headlines. Fighting between rival communities in Tripoli seem to have subsided as the army continues its deployment in the trouble spots. Future bloc leader Fuad Sanyura calls on Hezbollah to withdraw its militia from Syria. 
And finally, the United Nations launched a record $5.2 billion rate appeal to fund operations in Syria. Those were today's headlines from Future TV, live from Beirut. We'll be back again tomorrow for more updates. Have a great evening.